Welcome to Words to Live By, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each week, we will share some of the wit and wisdom of Ronald Reagan. In essence, Words to Live By, made up of radio addresses and speeches he delivered from the 1960s through the 1980s. In September 1984, the day right after the president addressed the UN, he also addressed a meeting of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, also known as the IMF. So let's review a little background on those two institutions before we begin. The World Bank was established along with the IMF in 1944 at the Bretton Woods Conference. The bank is essentially an international financial institution that provides loans and grants to the governments of low- and middle-income countries for the purpose of pursuing capital projects. During the 1980s, the bank emphasized lending to service third-world debt and making structural adjustment policies that were designed to streamline the economies of developing nations. The IMF oversees the stability of the world's monetary system, while the World Bank aims to reduce poverty by offering assistance to middle-income and low-income countries. You'll hear in these remarks that while the president lauds the work of the World Bank and the IMF, he does clarify where American support needs to be because he emphasized that while we would not impose our ideas our policies on anyone, we felt obliged to point out that no nation can have prosperity and successful development without economic freedom. Let's listen. Mr. Chairman, Managing Director de la Rosier, President Clausen, governors of the International Monetary Fund of the World Bank Group, and distinguished guests, on behalf of the American people, we are delighted to welcome you to the United States for your 39th annual meeting. I am honored once again to address the leaders of your institutions, your quest to improve the condition of humankind, to offer opportunities for fulfillment in our individual lives and the life of our national and world communities, places you in a position of responsibility and leadership second to none. You are true missionaries for a more prosperous world and a more peaceful world. And we who are public servants in this international economic community know well the daily problems and pitfalls that obstruct our path to progress. Sometimes the immensity of these challenges and the attention they receive seem all but overwhelming to us. But in these moments, let us remember and draw strength from the most powerful, enduring truth in human history. Free men and women are not destined to be powerless victims of some capricious historical tide. Free men and women are themselves the driving force of history. And our future is never trapped in the hands of fate. Our future will depend on our own freedom, courage, vision, and faith. When I first spoke to you three years ago, I asked that we examine the terrible shocks inflicted upon the world economy during the 1970s, that all of us face up to the origins of those problems and also recognize our ability to withstand and surmount them. For our part, we said one conclusion seemed both undeniable and universally true. The societies whose economies had fared best during these tumultuous times were not the most tightly controlled, not necessarily the biggest in size, nor even the wealthiest in natural resources. What united the leaders for growth was a willingness to trust the people, to believe in rewarding hard work and legitimate risk. So the United States made a new beginning, one based on our conviction that we could only meet the challenge of contributing to world economic growth 
and of assuring that all countries, especially the poorest, participate fully in that growth by renouncing past policies of government, of government regimentation and overspending, and by taking decisive action to get our domestic house in order and restore incentives to liberate the genius and spirit of our free people. And while we would not impose our ideas, our policies, on anyone, we felt obliged to point out that no nation can have prosperity and successful development without economic freedom, nor can it preserve personal and political freedoms without economic freedom. Only when the human spirit can dream, create, and build, only when individuals are given a personal stake in deciding economic policies and benefiting from their own success, only then do societies become dynamic, prosperous, progressive, and free. We invited all of you to join us and walk with us on this new path of hope and opportunity, and some of you have. We knew this endeavor would be neither short nor easy. We knew that it would require great effort and patience. But we were confident that once our people saw it through, the rewards would be far greater than anticipated. I believe that confidence has been justified. As I said yesterday to the United Nations, we can speak again, and we should, of a future that is bright and hopeful, a future of prosperity that I believe is far nearer than most of us would ever dare to hope. By working together, we can make it happen. Our own economy is dramatically changed from only three years ago. Rewarding hard work and risk-taking has given birth to an American renaissance. Born in the safe harbor of freedom, economic growth gathered force and rolled out in a rising tide that has reached distant shores. We are heartened that the strength of the U.S. economy is helping lead the world from recession toward a new period of lasting economic expansion with lower rates of inflation in many countries. And we're convinced we can continue to offer this leadership in the future. More about the president's beliefs and ideas about the future of these organizations right after this brief message. The Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation is the nonprofit organization created by President Reagan himself and specifically charged by him with continuing his legacy and sharing his principles individual liberty, economic opportunity, global democracy, and national pride. We must remain vigilant and work together to share these conservative principles with younger generations. Your role is critical to move our mission forward. Thank you for your continued support. Please visit reaganfoundation.org slash give. That's reaganfoundation.org slash give. Now, back to the story. So back in 1981, President Reagan extolled the importance of open markets, private enterprise, individual initiative, low taxes, and limited government as the true path to prosperity for the developing world. He also took a shot at the Soviet Union for having nothing to offer. The fastest growing nations, President Reagan observed, were the ones providing more economic freedom to their people. For these comments in 1981, he was wildly criticized. Yet he stayed the course. Let's listen. Permit me to elaborate. The United States has enjoyed 21 straight months of economic growth, the strongest growth since 1950. We've witnessed the creation of six million jobs and seen our expansion sustained by exceptionally low inflation. Consumer prices are rising by only around 4% now compared with more than 12% in 1980. And let me emphasize, that we're determined to make another change from past policies. We intend to bring inflation down even more, and we're determined to keep it down by continuing to restrain the growth 
of our government spending. We have already cut the rate of that spending by more than half, and we're pushing hard for an amendment to our Constitution, placing mandatory limits on government's power to spend. Fueling economic growth has been the record increase in venture capital and business investment, both results of new incentives in our tax structure. And innovation holds out the promise for continued strength in productivity growth and new breakthroughs in advanced technology. We believe we have taken only the first small steps into the newest frontier, the technological revolution. By reaching for great gains in productivity, we can create a bounty of new jobs, technologies, and the quality of life surpassing anything that we have ever before dreamed or imagined. I tell you today from my heart, we in America want to share our knowledge and the blessings of progress with you and your citizens, because together and only together can we build a better world, a far better world. So just as we must do more to restrain public spending, we believe more can and must be done to increase personal incentives. We will not be satisfied until America challenges the limits of growth. We want to enact an historic simplification of our tax system that will enable us to significantly increase incentives by bringing personal income tax rates further down, not up. We have noted the increased recognition that's given to the central role of incentives in promoting economic growth. The Wall Street Journal recently cited surveys that were published by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development as indicating that governments can best spark economic growth by spending less and cutting tax rates, not by planning an elaborate industrial policy. This is our strategy for growth, and it will allow us to keep America's deficit on its current downward path. And as we continue moving forward, we're heartened to see that recovery abroad is gaining momentum. Growth of well over 3% is being projected for other industrial countries in 1984 and 85. And we're seeing a rise in developing country growth rates led by those aggressively pursuing outward-looking and market-oriented policies. This broadening economic growth has had a significant impact on stimulating world trade your 1984 IMF annual report pointed out that with the progress of economic recovery in the industrial countries, the volume of world trade began to expand quite strongly in 1983, and the prolonged deterioration in the terms of trade of non-oil developing countries came to an end. Expansion here in the world's largest single market has meant increased trading opportunities for other nations. Total U.S. imports rose 32 percent in the first half of this year, and for the full year our imports are expected to exceed 1983 imports by over 25 percent. U.S. imports from the non-oil de developing countries rose about 14 percent in 1983, and they're up by nearly 30 percent for the first half of 1984. We sometimes hear complaints about U.S. interest rates, particularly by debtor nations, which are legitimately concerned about the additional debt service costs that they must bear. But not enough mention is made of trade and the far greater benefits developing countries receive from renewed economic growth and open market policies of the United States. As we go forward, we will support our two great institutions, the IMF and World Bank, which have been the cornerstones of the international economic and monetary systems since World War II. The United States remains honored to be one of the founding fathers of both organizations. Besides their enormous contributions to individual freedom, prosperity, and initiative, these multilateral organizations are effectively handling even greater responsibilities 
as the technological revolution ushers in an increasing velocity of hum human transactions and greater global economic interdependence. Last year, the World Bank committed over $15 billion to supplement the efforts of developing member countries to strengthen their economies. In addition to its proven expertise as an investment project lender, we value highly the bank's ability to provide helpful policy guidance and technical assistance and to act as a catalyst in encouraging private enterprise and investment capital. We don't want a world in which some nations go forward while others are left behind. We want a world in which all go forward together. And we can go forward together if our countries give up spending what need not be spent and leave more in the hands of all the people who work and earn. Let them plant the seeds of wealth and we'll see the smallest dreams awaken and grow into golden dreams for all mankind. Thank you for listening. For more information on the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute, including information on how to become a member, information on upcoming exhibits at the Reagan Library, and more information on the legacy of President Reagan, please visit reaganfoundation.org. And don't forget to like and follow the Reagan Foundation on all social media platforms. Don't forget to subscribe to the Words to Live By podcast in your iTunes or Google Play stores and on other podcast platforms as they become available. New episodes of Words to Live By come out every Tuesday. Like what you hear? Check out our A Reagan Forum podcast featuring great speeches delivered at the Reagan Library. New episodes drop every Thursday. And... Don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook, at Ronald Reagan 40 on Twitter, and Reagan Foundation on YouTube. Also, search for us on SoundCloud and Stitcher.